Good morning. quick little project for you guys today we're just gonna be attaching some fence along the inside of an existing um, I think it's a split rail fence shouldn't take super long we're using welded wire super easy to work with we got about like 300 plus feet to do and uh, it's gonna be pretty simple welded wire works really well for that because it's easy to work with it's cheap doesn't have a lot of structural like strength and integrity on its own but if you already have an existing fence it's going to help keep critters in or out once you attach it to that fence. I don't stretch the welded wire super tight, but I do like to pull on it a little bit because it just helps to hold it in position while I'm stapling it and also does make it a little bit straighter. You can't pull very tight because you'll break the wire. So I'm going to whip up a really quick basic fence stretcher for you to see and I'll show you the one that I usually use as well. All right, you guys, so this is what I would normally use in this case with welded wire because it just has the hooks that would hook onto the end. I don't use this with the woven wire because it'll ruin the wire if you do it in line, which means before the last post, and you pull the woven wire so tight that if you don't hook it up in line, you're not going to be able to attach it at the end. The welded wire is different because you're going to be able to just staple it to the posts as you go, and that's going to hold it. There's not enough tension on it because you can't pull it that hard to pull those staples out when you release the um, when you release the fence stretcher. So this is the one I usually use. I don't love it, super heavy duty, so it's totally unnecessary, um, but it's quick to attach and it works okay. This is the one that I use for woven wire. So super heavy duty, Hunter actually made this for me. Lots of attachment points, I really like this thing. But basically all of these locking nuts come off and then this piece slides out you put this through the wire, put this in on the other side, lock it in, crank them down. I usually only ever have to use uh, just my hand is enough force to lock that in, but you can also put a wrench on these and it's not going anywhere. Then you hook up your chain and come along or uh, chain walkers or whatever you wanna use to fit these loops here. So uh, super strong, holds on super tight and it'll hold on in line with the fence so you can stretch it before the last post without damaging the fence. So what I'm gonna do right now is make one real quick in like 25 seconds out of this guy and this. <laughs> Okay, so these nails, we're gonna grab on the wire, grab a hammer and bend this over real quick. maybe so the nails came all the way through these are our hooks they're gonna hook through the wire and pull back that way I just use this old uh, you know car strap or whatever it's for and uh, nailed that into the ends and yeah we're all set so definitely not the most 
Not the safest thing, but uh, it's gonna work well. with them and get all set up and I'm going to skip you guys straight to the action. Alright you guys, I got set up in here right inside the fence and I'll show you they've got this split rail fence right here that runs all the way along inside those trees and then up along here and we just need to attach our wire right along the inside here. We're just gonna staple it on. Snaking it through these trees is gonna be a little bit tricky, but like I was saying earlier, the welded wire is super easy to work with, and so super light, super pliable. <laughs> stretcher there. I've got a shirt wrapped around this tree because I didn't want the wire to scuff it up. It's really close to the fence. The rest of them were far enough away. It wasn't that big of a deal. And then I've got little come along here. It's not going to take much. We're barely going to pull on this stuff. Just enough to straighten it out. And then I've got it hooked up to that tree up there. It's uphill so that's why I have it down on the base. Or normally I wouldn't pull against a nice tree like that but we're going to pull just a tiny little bit and we're also um have a nylon strap around it instead of cable or chain or something that could damage it like that. So let's get this guy hooked up here. All right, so just gonna take our nails, find a vertical stay, and pass them right behind it. And there it is, we're hooked on. So now we can hook our come along or whatever we wanna pull with to this strap here. Normally you'd put a loop in the middle there, but this was a quick job. So let's see if we can find a good nail. So there it is. Just hooked right behind that vertical stay. Just go make sure that I'm holding strong down here. That looks good. All right, let's go pull a little bit more. As you're pulling, you want to walk along the fence line and jiggle it and adjust and make sure it's not caught on any nails. Make sure that you're not kinking it anywhere. Caught on branches. Um, just look for any weaknesses. You could also use this, this is more important with woven wire, but you could use this chance to manually straighten out any major kinks that were in the roll. This low carbon wire, most of those kinks should stretch out, but you can if you see kind of some little whoopsies here and there, then uh, you could just kind of straighten those out with your hands and that'll make it look a lot nicer once it's all stapled to the mat.
have it nice and straight. It's turned out really nice. Whoever put this split rail fence in did a really good job. It's a really good sturdy fence. A lot of times these sp split rail fences are not that great as far as structure, but they did a good job. Also, one thing I want to point out, I don't just use the staple gun because it's faster. It is way faster and more convenient and also more consistent. So you end up with cleaner looking staples. However, one of the biggest reasons is that if I use a hammer, I'm gonna be pounding on these posts a lot and it's a lot of jarring and shaking and it's unnecessary. The, the stapler is much, much gentler on these posts. So if you're doing it yourself, don't go out and buy a stapler. They're expensive um, and a hassle to haul around with you. But if you're doing this regularly, definitely get yourself, that should be one of your first investments, is a staple gun. They make them in nine gauge. I think this is a 10.5 gauge. All right, you guys, we are wrapped up for the day. So now I gotta go do some real work. This is play. I gotta go do some, pick up some straw for Dan for the store and bring that back to him. I'm gonna stop at a cool park by the bridge uh, to film an outro for you guys. Something did happen to our DIY fence stretcher, and I think you're gonna to wanna to see it. Um, so I'll stop there and uh, we'll finish the video off there. All right, you guys, so on our last stretch of fence, I gave it just a little more juice than I should have in order to get a little kink stretched out of the wire. We're kind of coming down a hill and around a corner and some bushes, and this happened. So split it right where the nails came through. So I knew I was gonna make a weak spot with those nails, and uh, but I didn't figure I was gonna be pulling that hard, which I shouldn't have been. Um, so if, if I'd used it for what it was designed to be used for, it would have been totally fine. And so I wouldn't worry too much about it. I did use a nail gun for this. If you use a, a nail and hammer, it might be a little more prone to splitting just because it's a little bit more of a jarring um, way to put a nail through a board. We could fix that by moving them back a little bit. And so if you put the nail back here, uh, that would help, but it's still gonna be in line with the other nails, which does make a weak spot. Another way to fix that, uh, and I was gonna do this actually, but my ratchet strap or this tie down strap was really short, which worked well because I didn't want a really long one, but I nailed it in the end here. It was super quick and dirty, worked fine. Uh, but if I had wrapped it around the edge, which is what I intended to do, I intended to wrap it around this end here and then uh, tack it in with the nails, and that would have created enough support on these ends to keep it from splitting. And then you could pretty much pull as hard as you want. Maybe not enough for like woven livestock fence, but it might be. Honestly, this fence stretcher was one of the easiest to use I've ever used. Super simple. Um, it was crazy how fast it was to hook up to the wire. I mean, these, these angled nails just slid right into where they were supposed to be. They're low profile. They're, they're small. They're not going to catch on things and get stuck in small gaps. I mean, it was just, it worked so well. I'm really tempted to kind of take this to Hunter and see if he can fab up something similar to this. Maybe just a piece of nice thick flat bar with some angled tabs. Um, it was just too simple. It, it really couldn't be any better. And so I did switch to my uh, just kind of uh, fabricated hook style um, fence stretcher towards the end because I broke this one. I really regretted uh, having used that so much because this was this was so much better. But anyway, so that's the end of this video. I gotta go do real work now. So I will see you on the next video. Please subscribe and like and give me your comments. See about improvements for this uh, quick two, five minute, some, somewhere around there, fence stretcher. So, all right guys, I'll see you on the next one.